year they meet on Marshall's turf, where Rakeem Cato's record-setting offense is yet to score fewer than 35 points all season. It's last year's champion versus this year's best, and it's coming up. Well, the weather conditions this year here in Huntington, West Virginia, about the same as they were last year in Houston when these two teams met. It's Marshall versus Rice. And it's awfully chilly outside. Fans trying to stay as warm as possible. Even if that means some spicy foods on the menu today, the tailgaters out in full force. The chili as well, the hot wings, they've got it all covered. We get right to the standings. Rice trying to, well, control their own destiny in the West, trying to win out. Meanwhile, Marshall, an unblemished season so far, trying to keep their winning ways going here at home. Led by Devin Johnson, who's one of the great stories in college football, converted tight end linebacker, moved him to running back during training camp this year. He's averaging 150 yards a game. And he hasn't played in three weeks, but the last time he played against Florida Atlantic, ran for 272 yards and four touchdowns. I mean, he's 250 pounds, and he is a difficult guy to bring down. It's a cold but clear day here in Huntington, West Virginia. The thundering herd taking the field. And they look to keep their perfect 9-0 season going today against the Rice Owls, winners of their last six straight day. Today we'll have ref camp for you all game long. Have an inside look right there at the coin toss. We'll be getting that view throughout the game today. A pair of 10 win seasons as well. The Owls. We'll start things off today after that kick sails behind the end zone. The pass pressure and drop spun down back at the 20. Rashawn Myers, who has started every game, a senior, a loss of 11. Well, the pocket just collapsed, you know, and that's going to be a big part of today's game is in the trenches what goes on. So Rashad Myers is just going to be coming from your left side right here as Dreyfus Jackson tries to spin out. Rakeem Cato, the six foot one, 176 pound fourth year starter, and he has been Mr. Everything in so many ways. Him and the combination with Cato and Devin Johnson too. The numbers speak for themselves, but all anybody ever talks about with Rakeem Cato is two things: how competitive he is, and all he cares about is winning games. To the air right away. We'll pick up a couple right there to his former high school teammate, Tommy Schuler. Schuler needed only three catches entering today from tying Darius Watts for the second most catches all time in herd history. So one down, two to go. This is a team that runs it a lot. Seventh in the nation in rushing yards, nearly 300 yards a game. Johnson in the backfield hits the carry. And gets it almost Devin all the way out to midfield. His tackles this year are tackles for loss. He's just a relentless player. He just a yard. They give it to Johnson. He's able to hurl forward. He just went up and over here. I mean, show some of his athletic ability. Uh, just to hurdle Zach Pat. Marshall has won 10 in a row dating back to last season. Of course, 12 straight here at home. And as you guys mentioned, their last loss came to Rice at the Conference USA Championship game. It's something that Marshall has not forgotten. Head coach Doc Holliday said his team understands how badly they got beaten. While quarterback Rakeem Cato told me before the game, it left such a bad taste in his mouth that they've had it circled on their calendar for months. So now they get a chance for revenge and to redeem them. Themselves. Guys, something that bodes well for him. They haven't lost to a team from Texas ever here at home. Yeah, that's good stuff, Leslie. You can tell this is not just another game. And Juwan Davis gets the hand up, gets strung out, and is able to just plunge his way back to the 10. This time, the draw with Dillard. Big hit there, and he's tackled shy of the first down. Trying to catch Marshall off guard a little bit there. Neville Hewitt with a big thundering hit. Pick up a six, but not enough. Well, it was just a draw play, and really, Marshall just rushed three that time, Aaron. So they dropped eight into coverage. Everybody that's dropping here, all they're doing is just keeping their eyes here on Dillard. And that's what they do. They just dropped. Now their eyes are on They were going to run a uh, draw like that. They're just going to collapse on them, make sure that they don't get enough for that first down, and they did that. Welcome back to Marshall. No score yet in the first quarter. A special ceremony here though, that they had on campus today to open the new Chad Pennington Hall of Fame in a very 
special weekend for the entire university. And right now, I am joined by former Marshall quarterback Chad Pennington himself. Chad, to be a part of such a special weekend, the opening of the Hall of Fame, but also to have it named after you, what does that mean to you? Well, it's special, and the reason it's special is that it honors all of our great Hall of Famers across the board in our athletic department. We've got a, a really nice tradition here and a great story, a story that's only ours, and we deserve to have a Hall of Fame like that. Yeah, you talk about that story. Obviously, you guys are also remembering the 75 that died this weekend, 44 years ago. To see how far this football program has come, what are you the most proud of? I'm the most proud of the fact that when the crash happened, I think people thought it would be the end of our story and the end of Marsh University, but it was only the beginning. And since the crash, with a lot of sweat and blood and tears, a lot of hard work from a lot of men and women, our program is back where it should be, and that's in the national limelight. I know you've been a mentor to Rick Kane Cato as well, who keeps breaking all your records, I might add, but where have you seen him grow the most? He's grown most as a person, as a young man, and learning what it's like to be a leader, learning how to be a leader and lead a group of men, and just to see his development and growth over the last four years has been awesome. All right, thanks, Chad. We appreciate it. Aaron? All right, Leslie, Chad, thank you so much. As Remy Watson gets the carry up the middle, and Brian, if you're a program of any size, Chad Pennington is about the perfect guy you can ask for to, to be the face of a program, even if he's not around every day. Well, great player, great person, uh, connected to the university, lives right down uh, the road in Lexington, Kentucky, Got his five boys here at every home game. Got a little sweet up here. So he's a big part of this program. He's helped out this quarterback with Team Cato. Cato on third and five. Gets just enough for the first down. Looking up there with Tommy Schuler, his second catch. But it's the second catch for Schuler. It's interesting. Schuler came in this year, catching over 100 passes in each of the last two years. There's just running a little flat route on the outside, a little switch route. And But this year with the, we're not catching as many passes. Out to the sideline, and a catch made. Ron Apple stays on his feet before then falling back towards the sideline. Remy Watson stepped it up. I mean, these guys, as a group, average over seven yards a carry. Watson, four total touchdowns last week. The handoff to Johnson, plenty on third and one to get the first down. He's a freight train now. When he gets going and he squares his shoulder to the line of scrimmage, as he comes out of this pistol formation. I mean, there was no hesitation of where he was going. He's upset that he didn't keep his balance. Really just not many arm tackles bring Devin Johnson down, especially early in the game. Pickup of nine. Yeah, that's about what he averages right there. It really is. 8.8 .8 yards of carry. Play action pass. Cato towards the sideline, catch made. Tommy Schuler, his third catch already. And then up ties Darius Watts, second most catches all time in Marshall history. A beautiful throw by Cato in stride to Schuler. They caught him in his zone coverage that time. Cato rolling out. Will he tuck it and run? He will. Back to the sideline. And he gets there enough. And it's seven. See you now, Zach Pat's a defensive end on that side. They'd love to be able to keep Cato inside, but watch, he comes up field right now. And Cato sees the outside. He knows exactly what he needs for the first down. And that's part of that decision making. Zach ties a school record. 33 year old yard field goal from Justin Haig. It's up and through. And the herd get on the board first. Three to nothing, Marshall here from Huntington, West Virginia. Leslie McCaslin roaming the sidelines for us, our entire Fox Sports Net crew here in West Virginia, where they know how to bundle up, Baldy. It's about 35 degrees here today. That man in the middle, Alex Mirabel, the offensive line coach here for Marshall. One of the reasons why they have one of the most powerful offenses in the country is because of his development of a lot of players. So teaching never really stops, development never really stops. Bedvik puts his foot into it, and that is all the way through the back door of the end zone. We'll step aside. Marshall leading the Rice Owls, a rematch of last year's conference championship game. Studios and Greg Wolf for the scoreboard update. Got 21. Aaron Baldy, back to you. Take the hand off to Davis. They swing it out, trying to get Taylor involved. Not going anywhere. Volley, this is somebody they really have to have a big presence today if they want to win. Yeah, he does, but you have to get, be able to get away from A.J. Leggett. There was nobody to block him. Just a little bubble screen on the outside here to Taylor. Leggett reaches so quickly. Oh, fast. That's the speed of this Marshall defense. It's, it's 
came, to, came from 10 yards deep at safety. Be able to bring Taylor down in the open field. First catch by an Al's wide receiver so far today. Derek Dillard, the running back at the earlier catch from Dreyfus Jackson, which picked up a first down. Third and long. Jackson trying to buy some time, flings it to the sidelines, and overthrows his man and ran out of room. Let's go. Zach right there, incomplete, but really they've done a phenomenal job of turning this program around. They won last week 63 to 17. And Southern Miss Johnson on the ground. <laughs> Gang tackle, that's what it takes. Johnson listed at 6'1, 243 pounds. And we have a chance to see what it looks like from ref cam. Something we'll have worry all day long. But it's Chad Craig, our umpire today, who's about six foot seven, by the way. So it's a good angle right here at Devin Johnson taking a bunch of hits from the Hit over pass complete and a hurt first down tiptoeing by the sidelines right there. I get up at this tight end one more time. It's Ryan Juracek on a little crossing route that time. And really, I always say that to Rakeem Cato, his favorite receiver is the open receiver. And that's what Juracek was that time. Rhode Apple, his other tight end to catch earlier. Now you're a check getting involved. Johnson straight ahead. He seems to always fall forward when he's running. Well, here's an amazing stat. I mean, a lot of statistics around this team of Marshall here. Here is another ref cam here as he come at you. But the three running backs for Marshall have 273 carries this year. A combined. 31 yards of loss. Let's see the camera on top of the bill. Uh, look through the walkway here inside Jones C. Edwards Stadium in Huntington, West Virginia. The twice on third and one in the first quarter. To Johnson, he's got enough for the first down. That's that's the Devin Johnson run. And it's interesting because this guy was a great running back in Virginia. There he is uh, again looking at it from the umpire coming right at you here. You see he runs right through the arm tackle of Nick Elder, the middle linebacker. Just barely missed on that one. Cato, uh, enough for the first down. That's a pretty pass. That's Schuler's fourth catch already. Yeah. I mean, you can just see the ball just spin and rotate. Tight spiral coming out of Cato's hands. I asked Cato, you know, he throws with gloves on. And, you know, just thought, well, maybe it's because it's cold. He goes, no, he, he throws with them all the time. He gets a good feel for the ball. They're sticky. And the, said sometimes those balls that start a game got a little bit of a, a grease to him. He goes, that, that ball comes out with the gloves really tight, like on that last spiral. Sets up third and eight. Cato to pass. Catch me. That's enough for a first down. That's your check to tight end. Laid out for that one. Another beautiful throw from Cato. In the pocket on third down. Enough for the first down. Watch this ball come into your living room. Look at that spiral. Right over the hands of the underneath defender. Cato came in today just two touchdown passes short of Chad Pennington's school record. I'm sure he'd like to eclipse that here this afternoon. Makes the hand up. Goes up top for the touchdown. Juracek's third catch and his first touchdown today, his second on the season. And the herd find the end zone for the first time today. And for Cato, his 114th career touchdown pass as a quarterback for the Thundering Herd. Juracek's second touchdown of the season. Good play action fake. And it's capped off on a two-yard touchdown pass. Cato going over the top. He finds his six-foot-three tight end, Brian Juracek, for the score. In the second quarter here in Huntington, West Virginia, with Marshall up 10-0, I want to show you this last touchdown throw to Juracek. Watch the free instant here to Devin Johnson. Look at the eyes here. All going to the leading rusher in Conference USA. But there's Juracek slipping out the backside. So you use Devin Johnson as a decoy. 
And why not? I mean, you have to. Well, yesterday marked the 44th anniversary of the Marshall football team's plane crash and the tragedy that happened here in Huntington. Obviously, they're wearing the 75 on their helmets to honor those that died that day. They also had a special ceremony yesterday at the Memorial Fountain on campus. About 2,000 people were there, including head coach Doc Holliday, the entire team as well. And then they opened the Hall of Fame here at Marshall today and celebrated them as well and those 75 people again here is the helmet they're wearing today a special weekend a head coach doc holiday told us he really wants his team to understand how much that incident means to this program and how special those 75 people were so they were all there to support it and of course a very special weekend for this team and for the entire school as they open that hall of fame as well well leslie thank you for that as jackson keeps it himself and and the dovetail a little bit, Molly, with what Leslie was just saying. We had a chance to hear Coach Doc Holliday talk about this. This is a very emotional time yeah. every year for everyone here in Huntington. Well, you know what? They, they, they call themselves just the Sons of Marshall. Like, they're all connected to that plane crash 44 years ago, just yesterday, November 14th. And so they're all reminded. Of course, none of these kids were, were born yet in 1970, but they're all reminded of what the history of this program is, and that they're all touched by it. Jackson airs it out down the sideline looking for Taylor and complete knocked away. Looking for a big play. It was Taylor last year in the conference championship game that was able to haul in a 75 yard touchdown pass. It was the longest scoring play yeah. in game history. Nice play by Taekwon Lang. The safety covering Taylor in that play. Look at him. He's blind, but he, he just puts that left arm up when Taylor starts to look for. Trying to scramble now at midfield, and he can't get away. And he's thinking there was a face mask there. Or a horse collar. I mean, that's what Drivers Jackson wants from Neville Hewitt, the linebacker on the play. Number six, you're going to see him. He's chasing him as he gets out of the pocket. And any time, it doesn't have to necessarily get that hand inside of the shoulder pads, but any time you pull a guy down from the backside, that should be. Third and long. in motion. Incomplete fourth down. That Neville Hewitt now, he leads his team in tackles, but that was great coverage on Zach Wright that time. I mean, he was all over him. And then finished the play. There's no place for Dreyfus Jackson to go with that ball. Take a look at Neville Hewitt finishing this play. I mean, look at that coverage. And then he just throws him down and like uh, it's, you might think that with Devin Johnson out of the game maybe you could make a little bit of hay with Stuart Butler but he's averaging over eight yards a carry. You know and Remy Watson is averaging over seven almost seven yards a carry so when you, see, when you see all these backs run for such high averages you have to look at the offensive line and how good they are up front. And that's the whole key to this offense. Butler's numbers last week certainly helped his yards per carry. Five carries, 118 yards, and two scores. On third and long, Cato directing some traffic, has all day, and it is complete right there, the 35. What a catch. Angelo Lewis. Lewis. Yeah. Wow. I mean, watch Cato here. I mean, I was going to watch him, like, point, go deep. I mean, is that like Babe Ruth, like, I'm going deep here? Here it comes. Hey, he's pointing to his receiver. 25 yards a catch. Big play here. Oh, you talk about it. And that's against their best corner, Bryce Callahan. And great coverage. Callahan trying to strip Gene Louise of the ball, but the throw beat the great coverage. on his feet. That's his fifth grab today already. Well, this is a great throw. Another good throw by Cato from the pocket. Really throwing it uh, with a lot of hot sauce on it. A little bit like at La Familia last night. You know, some good peppers and I think uh, Ralph last night for Other stays in the backfield. Cato looking deep. Flush. Throws. Dumps it for a catch. At the 30, and some moves to add to it. 
looked like it was going to be a running play all the way for Cato after he just ran out of time, but instead he finds Butler out of the backfield for a first down. So this is Cato. I mean, to call it street ball really isn't fair. But when he gets out of the pocket, he keeps these plays alive. He's he's looking to throw it before he's looking to run it. Into the third catch all season for Butler. It's a pick of a 21. Cato eyeing deep again. Catch made and a touchdown. High league Foster, and with that, Rakeem Cato. That's a record tying touchdown pass. He ties Chad Pennington for the most all time in Marshall history 115 career touchdown strikes. He has that little thing after he throws a touchdown where he puts those hands like in a holster, like it's a great Western shootout. That was another great throw. I mean, we're, we're talking one after another, and I know Chad Pennington will not mind when Rakeem Cato breaks another one of his records here at Marshall. Touchdown pass of the day for Cato, finding High Leak Foster for his first touchdown catch of the year. Watch High Lake Foster in here in the slot. And this is the old post pattern, but watch what he does to the safety Malcolm Hill. Right now, Malcolm Hill is opening up there and he's running there. And once he gets his hips turned, that's when the quarterback, Rakeem Cato, knows where he's going with the ball. Hill could never make up once his hips got turned around. And we talk about hips a lot in the game of football. It is about a game of, uh, a game of hips. And when you turn them, uh, good indicator of Cato where he's going with the ball is he put those guns back in the holster. And Davis gets a breather, Diller to the backfield. The option, the pitch. Out of the line of scrimmage and is able to dive forward for just a yard. Mike Lon Lang, nice lateral movement to the sideline to make that stop. Making the handoff, down the seam and knocked away. That pass is just rejected. Neville Hewitt, we've been seeing his name a lot so far here in the first half. Well, there he is, number six, right in the picture. Look at me. You can't get there. Just all he's doing is looking right at the eyes of Dreyfus Jackson. Here it is from, from Huntington, West Virginia, 17 nothing. This has been a martial defense so far that it's been a stiff wall for the Rice offense. Well, they've been downright filthy here today. I mean, that's just the way they've been and on third down. Rice is one for five. If they don't convert this, I think they got to stay on the field and go for it on fourth down. Jackson with Dillard off his left hip. It's a blitz. Pressure to the sideline and incomplete. Looking for Zach Wright. That was a hurried throw. Neville Hewitt, huge pressure up the middle. Well, we talked about Neville Hewitt, and that time they sent him on a linebacker blitz. He's going to hit the backside of Dreyfus Jackson. Look at that hit. <laughs> oh, my. So far, we have seen the man of the hour today, Rakeem Cato, a couple of touchdown passes already. And some big-time hits. And it seems like each and every time, it's Neville Hewitt. This linebacking core has been iron uh, this offense and rightfully so garnered so much national attention led by Cato and Schuler and what they've been able to do but defensively I mean they're the best defense in Conference USA by a long shot on the 17 under four minutes to play the first half the handoff to Dillard now, anytime a running back has to stutter when he gets the handoff from the quarterback two or three times, you're not going to get a lot of yards. And that's a credit to the penetration that the front four of Marshall has had most of the day. Everybody at 300 or pushing 300. Three seconds to get the snap off. They do. They want to set up the option. Jackson running nowhere, and he spun around for a loss. Huge penetration, Jermaine Holmes that time. Well, that time Holmes had the quarterback, but Hewitt had the pitchman. And so, really, when you watch Dreyfus Jackson come down, I mean, right on the outside, Hewitt is sitting on Donald Dillon. There's no way he can pitch that ball. And so, 
Not that they just cut this to 10 points here. Makes this a little closer. Johnson up the middle. Has room to run. And he's finally going to be dragged down. What a carry on first down from Johnson. His biggest gain of the day. Well, that's what he has. Not only does he have the size, but look at the speed. I mean, he runs right through this defense. And arm tackles, forget it. He stiff arms a couple guys out of the way. And his biggest runs have been right down the middle this year. And he... Sometimes he runs so smooth you could you could put that afternoon cup of coffee on his head and wouldn't spill a drop. The big goal 42. He's got another first down and he's right by the 10. Look at that two runs. After you cut the lead to 17 to 7, and they're right back in scoring territory. 30 seconds haven't gone off the clock. That time again of 19. View from ref cam. Yeah. Get out. <laughs> got to turn to look. Davis, third straight time, and he is wrangled down in a flag. Well, Davis, quick hitter again, and knocked away incomplete pass. Marshall thinking they could return this one to the house. So after that incompletion, Aaron, and Jordan Taylor is still the only wide receiver for Rice to catch a pass. That one through the hands of Zach Wright. But you can see, like, they're just trying. They don't really think they can hang on to the ball, so everything's the short passing game. And you see there, right there, Zach Wright, a common mistake, trying to turn the foot. Marshall about to take over. They have the lead 20 to 7 here in the third quarter. Baldy time running out. What's your Heisman hopeful look like so far? Well, I mean, Dak Prescott's got the number one rated and team in in the land in Mississippi State. They're struggling against Alabama today. So we'll see how Prescott does. Winston trying to repeat winner. We haven't seen that since Archie Griffin. But I put Devin Johnson in to my Heisman hopefuls here. A lot of people don't know about him. Averaging 150 yards a game. He's on pace to, to crack that here today. But he's the best player on this team. And well, Marshall wins out and gets to a peach ball. A lot of people will find out about Devin Marshall, uh, Devin uh, Johnson. Play action pass completed to the 30 and a couple yards after that. Been a passing game today for Marshall. Schuler has five catches, now make it six. Big game for Schuler. 62 yards today. He's now over the 3,000 yard mark for his career. On the ground, Johnson into Al's territory. Just shy of the 30. Another big chunk of yards there by the six foot one, 243 yard, 30 pound back out of Richlands, Virginia, lumbering for 22. One thing about Johnson, when he is going forward, he never looks to his side or around. You see where everybody is. He instinctively just stuck out that violent stiff arm of his to kind of fight for some extra. The NFL, part of being aggressive. They give to Johnson. Back to about the 30. I suppose when you pick up yards like Marshall does. Well, he's always going forward. You know, he doesn't lose yards. Very few negative yards on the season right now. And he's just one of those guys, like a lot of great backs and big backs. He just gets stronger as the game goes on. Cato on play action. Now the seam catch made. Marshall touchdown. The record-setting touchdown pass by Rakeem Cato. Finds his tight end, throw the pull, and that is career pass number 116 for Rakeem Cato, passing Chad Pennington. It's a new Marshall School record. Nice having a record-setting tailback and then a six-foot-seven tight end in your arsenal of weapons to use for Rakeem Cato. <laughs> Three touchdown passes, Baldy set the new school record. Well, your check catches the first one off play action. Foster catches the second one on a post off play action, and then he gets his starting tight end pro apple right here, matched up against Brian Nordstrom, the defensive end. And one thing in watching Rakeem Cato, he loves to talk about his touchdowns on the sideline to whatever <laughs> we will listen. I mean, he will describe now. There he is, as he should, giving a lot of credit to the offensive line. A lot of protection right there. I always like to see my quarterback hang with the offensive line. Those are the guys that are trying to get him to that promised line, that promised land. You know those numbers, a look at tonight's mattress firm, all access update, a lot of Rakeem Cato, no surprise. 
something in the playbook. Last year, Luke Turner threw a couple of touchdown passes. Yeah, that would be a good changeup. It's Dillard in the backfield. And you can see the difference on third down. That has been a major part of the story today. Third and five for the Owls. Jackson running out of room and a sack. Back at the 35. Arnold Blackman brings him down. And that's been that kind of a day for Dreyfus Jackson. Nowhere to throw it, nowhere to run. Loss of 10. Well, obviously the coverage was good because Dreyfus Jackson here can't find anybody. He looks right, he looks left, and now he's running out of time. That proverbial clock in his head is running down, and Arnold Blackman is a guy, as does the defensive line, that wasn't there before. And it's his sixth sack that leads the team. Sixth time that Jackson's been hit today. Shooter on the return. Has some daylight. Out towards midfield. That's where he's brought down. Great field position for the herd. Well, it's been a record setting day for Rakeem Cato. Three touchdown passes. Passing Chad Pennington for the most now in school history. He'll take the field when you come back here in Huntington, West Virginia. One of them is putting up the numbers they have the last couple of seasons. They don't care. They just want to win. Well, Leslie, the reason why neither one of them are putting up in those kind of numbers is because of the play of Devin Johnson, uh, who came in today in eight games, averaging over 150 yards a game. And they've gone from being a passing team, past prolific team, to a team that runs it 58% of the time. And that's what good coaching is. It's the first down to the sideline. Schuler, another catch. That's number seven today. And Schuler growing up in Liberty City, Florida. Johnson on the ground inside the 30, keeps his feet. And it takes all 11 to bring him down. First of Feather, that's very surprising. Cato trying to get those yards right back. And he does. That's a first down. Another big strike. Ron Apple who caught the record setting touchdown pass from Cato to yeah. pass Chad Pennington. Gets the big first down catch here. When I watch Ro Apple, I, I, I think of a big wide receiver. I mean, that's what it he is. He's six foot seven. He's 235 pounds. He's, he's at tight end right now, and he's not a bad blocker, but he runs like a wide receiver. Pick up the over 20 on the ground. Johnson inside the five, another first down. Boy, good block that time by Fronapple at the end, giving uh, Johnson the edge on that. And there it is, right from helmet from the ref cam. He's in. Zach Pat that time, a pancake block. Johnson trying to get in on the scoring act here. The pistol, the handoff. Johnson, room to run, he's in for the touchdown. His first of the day, and for Johnson, his 16th on the ground this season. I like that rumbling. I like that guy. He is so humble, he never celebrates. Just leaves the ball on the ground, because I'm going to come back and score a whole bunch more before the season's in over. But what a story he has become and has been. College team to score at least 35 points every game this season. They are a point away as we get another view of Johnson plunging in for the short touchdown. Here's ref cam, and you can see, like, at that point, Furman, the safety, didn't want any part of Johnson of meeting him at the goal line. He kind of just breaks your will after a certain while. As well. They haven't been handled like this since they played Texas A&M back on September 13th, their second game of the year. Jackson reversing field, slides to his seat. Picks up four on the carry. Marshall trying to run the table, trying to stay one of the three unbeaten. Three 
minutes to play third quarter. Big to hand up Jackson over the middle and almost picked off. That, that was going to be rough for any receiver going across the middle. There are three thundering her defensive backs in this territory here. Jackson puts that ball up. You can see Letman was right there, the free safety. Pocket collapsing. Jackson brought down again. It has been a brawl in the pocket today when Jackson has dropped back. Well, they blitzed the middle linebacker, Jermaine Holmes. He was picked up by Juwan Davis, but the pocket was collapsing quickly. Just a five-man rush. And then the follow-up was Rouse, the defensive tackle. Down for the Owls. And our view here inside Jones C. Edwards Stadium, Huntington, West Virginia. Temperatures just above freezing today. Jackson trying to step up, hit as he throw, as he throws rather, an incomplete pass. And that will take us to the fourth quarter. Remy Watson with some big time pressure there. That's been a theme of the day for Dreyfus Jackson. Jackson to throw the end zone. Tanner can't hold on to it. It's a turnover on downs. Well, he had Taylor, maker. but really a good play on the outside by Taekwon, Taekwon Lang, who we talked a lot about here today. He knew he had to get rid of the ball quick. It was only a three man rush. They dropped eight. That effort. Well, I think that ball got through to Taylor. I think he just, I think this is just a drop. Yeah. He was distracted by what Lang did, and we don't see that from Jordan. Ah! And Johnson rushes off a tackle and gets past the 10. Take a look at our game summary so far. Total yards, Brian, that tells a lot. Well, they just crossed the century mark, 105 yards. It's been a complete domination by the Thundering Herd, and we came in saying that this defense is going to get a lot of national respect the way that they play. Right, so just 14 yards of total offense in the first quarter. Hill slings this pass out. The fine shooter is able to spin himself forward for a first down. Sometimes when you're the quarterback, you've got to be able to throw it from different platforms, different angles. This was like Louis Tiot throwing completely sidearm here <laughs> right by the earlobe of Zach Pat. Shuler will take it, though. He'll take it. Ah! To give the Johnson. Boy, big hole to run through. As you get his size, you get his speed, you give him a lane like that, Brian, and he'll pick up a first down like that pretty easily. Well, let's just see it from the umpire's ref cam here. You can see that the three, nobody really wants to get in the <laughs> He made it for an entire drive of 68 yards. It all rolls out. Near midfield, McManus on the receiving end. Another first down, a third down. Given play, there's a run component, there's a pass component, and then there's a Rakeem component. Like, there's three <laughs> different plays, and it's really up to, sometimes nobody else knows on the field what he's going to do until he does it. And so, it makes it very difficult to defend. Over the middle, catch made at the 30, still on his feet, inside the 20, and finally brought down. Apple once again, his fifth, making his sixth catch today. As a touchdown sprinkled in. Big chunk of yards there, another first down. Well, when I watched the film of Marshall this week and get ready for the game, I just saw Apple as a guy that is going to become a bigger part of this offense. He runs too well. And you can see him, I mean. If you look at this, the total yards that they're averaging, both on the ground and through the air. It's remarkable. They picked up almost identical numbers of first downs all season long with the running game and the passing game. Cato, his fourth touchdown pass. Yes, there it is. His fourth throwing score of the day. It's good for seven yards. <laughs> McManus on the receiving end. One 
thing I think is clear about Raheem Cato. I don't think he ever gets tired of throwing touchdown passes. I, I don't know if his record's ever going to get broken. You look at the group of five and Colorado State, Boise State, trying to form an argument as well. Boise's played some good competition. Scoring differential is through the roof for Marshall. Well, that's, and it, you know, and when you look at who's going to be that team that they're going to take, if Marshall's undefeated, I don't think there's a conversation. I mean, nothing against Boise or Colorado State. They're having fine seasons, but Marshall, when you watch them, and Doc Holliday spoke to this yesterday. I mean, they're focused. They take it a game at a time. That's his personality. Uh, but defensively, I mean, they're for real. They they have a lot of good players, and they have tremendous speed. It's a game for this thundering and herd offense. I mean, you and you take a look, Raheem Cato, Baldy, record-setting day. Well, it sure was. He broke Chad Pennington's career touchdown mark with his four touchdown passes today. Devin Johnson with 199 yards rushing. Another touchdown, just a bruising performance by Devin Johnson. Came in talking about him today. and. Even Doc said that, you know, when he was down in Florida, it's kind of softened him up. He doesn't like this cold weather anymore. Butler on the carry. Big yards. Butler with some room in front of him, and he's brought down inside of Rice territory. Big game there. Yeah, Shant saved a touchdown there by Butler on the outside. And the running game just continues to flourish. I bet that there's not many Marshall players, though, that feel cold. You know, when you secure your 10th win in a row, you do it in the fashion that they did against a team that won the championship a year ago, I, there's a lot to feel good and feel warm about. Tony Pittman with the carry. And the score right here tonight, well, almost a carbon copy of what it seems like has been almost every game for Marshall. Completely lopsided Rakeem Cato on his record-setting evening. And shakes. And midfield, Cato, Cato rather, four touchdown passes, passing Chad Pennington, most all-time franchise history. Doc Holliday. David Bailiff exchanging words. Marshall in convincing fashion tonight. 41 to 14. The herd improving now to 10 and 0. The Owls see their six-game winning streak snap. They go to six and four. Their first loss since September 20th. Right now, let's check in with Leslie standing by with Coach Doc Holliday. Well, Coach, your 10th straight win, and you guys don't just win. You've won in dominating fashion. As your team continues to rack up these wins, what's impressed you the most about the way they've played? Oh, yeah, just the way they, they prepare every week. They come out and they play hard, and uh, they like to play the game. You know what I mean? I mean, they just do a great job every week and show up and play, and we got to continue to do that. There's a lot of football left to be played, and uh, we can't worry about rankings and all those other things. We just got to worry about preparing and playing every week. If you were going to give a game ball, who would you give it to? Rakeem Cato, Devin Johnson, your defense, they were all phenomenal today. I'd give it to the offensive line because they do a tremendous job. And Coach Heater's defense was tremendous. So, you know, we got a lot of, lot of players that play extremely hard, and uh, they like each other and love to play. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck the rest of the way. Now, Baldy likes that game ball to the O-line. Marshall, the big win today. They stay undefeated. Well, Rakeem, we're just talking about the record that you broke. Another one of Chad Pennington's. You're going to have to tell him sorry at some point. Uh -oh. Great friend of mine, oh, man, we always talk about it. Uh, he know he understand. I just, I, I just <laughs> what what does do that if nothing means? I mean, it's, it's a blessing. Uh, uh, how, that I, I can. Uh, I think Coach Holiday do a great job of just putting me in the uh, right position so I can showcase my talent at the highest level. Uh, I just want to thank my old linemen, uh, all the players that surround me, all the defensive players, all the coaches who stood by me. And I mean, it just meant a lot to me so I can just come out here and just play uh, great football. You said that you had this game circled on your calendar since the championship game last year. So what does it mean to get this win? It means a lot. It means a lot. Uh, we, had th we had three games circled. Uh, Ohio game last year, Middle Tennessee, and also this game. I mean, this is the third one. I mean, we, we all wanted this. I mean, we felt like they took some, some, something from us that we really wanted. Uh, and this is a game right here that we really needed. Uh, and we just got to put this game behind us as soon as we lock in, walk in the locker room and, and uh, get prepared for a, a great UAB team. All right. Thanks, Rakeem. Looks like you got that something back. Guys. No problem. All right, Leslie, Rakeem, thank you so much. Their last loss was to Rice last year in Houston. They've won every game since then, including the bowl game last year. And, Baldy, you look at what he's been able to do so far this year. And tonight, Rakeem Cato, four touchdown passes, four different receivers, and a lot of the damage he did inside the pocket. Yeah, you know, and that's what Rice wanted to do, to try to keep him in there. And it started early against uh, one of his tight ends off play action to Ryan Juracek. And 
and he hits, uh, you know, Foster on a post pattern in stride right here, gets good coverage. So he keeps that going, and you know, I mean, he, he throws. You see this throw on the outside right here, the phone app on the tight end, a nice target on the outside. The tight ends got very involved here today, and then the final one here in the end zone to uh, McManus. Four different receivers, all different types of throws. You know, stick throws. He had to put some air under it. I mean, he's really a complete player, and uh, I, I just, I just like watching him play. I, I think he represents college football in this university really well.